audio companies. Are their hearts in the right place? Stick around and let's talk about it. Experience Comrades do with Charles here, HomestudioBasics.com, helping you make sound decisions leading to a beautiful audio experience that will make you fall in love with music, not gear, all over again. So, by now it's no secret that I'm a bit cynical. Some people really appreciate that about me because I'm brutally honest. But I'd be lying to you if I said I didn't inadvertently burn some bridges over the years. Wait, you mean I wasn't supposed to tell her that she didn't look anything like the photo on eHarmony? I'll tell you exactly what's on my mind, though I have mellowed out a bit since I was, as my mom liked to put it, quote, just a little snot-nosed kid, end quote. Love you, mom. A friend back in college once famously quipped, Stu says out loud what everyone else is thinking. I have a little bit more tact now that I'm older, but man, people really do some dumb shit and it grinds my gears. If I had a nickel, I'd have five cents. Fudgety nickels? Nah, just some old junk. Even so, there's a time and place for everything. In other words, no, you don't always have to be an asshole just for the sake of being genuine. There are times when you should actually hold your tongue. Today is not one of those days, my friends. Do companies actually have a vested interest in making good products? And if so, are they doing it for the right reasons? Are they interested in providing the best experience, as in, do they actually care about you? Or are they taking advantage of something universal? You know the pitch. You read up on a product and everything's sunshine and rainbows. In pictures, they make it seem like the best thing since sliced bread, but the reality often varies. An analogy will be something like a Big Mac or La Big Mac. Gazing at one in a drive-thru, you think it was the most well put together sandwich on the face of the earth. Then you open the wrapper and you're like, what the f is this shit? Reality is often disappointing. The problem is that most people don't question it. They just shove the burger down their gluttonous pie hole and wash it down with some liquid diabetes. <laughs> Aside from the fact that McDonald's is not actually food, the differences between that sobering truth and audio aren't much different. Audio is bread. <laughs> While there are great products out there, there's also the problem of overabundance. I mean, honestly, how many headphones do we need? It's been said that most successful businesses provide only a few options in their stores, and for good reason. The more products there are, the harder it becomes to decide on something. Costco, if I remember correctly, employs this KISS method, and it's worked out tremendously for them. Five Guys Burgers and Fries follows a similar protocol, and they've been doing it since their inception. Sometimes less is more. People know exactly what it is they want and what they're going to get when they walk into a Five Guys. Heck, even Cookout of all places has drastically reduced the size of their menu, and it's not nearly as overwhelming to look at when you're in the drive-thru. I think this is true for audio as well. While there may be lots of good products, oftentimes they only serve to confuse the newcomer who has no idea where to start. Audio, and specifically headphones, have really blown up in the last few years. It seems like now there are a lot of companies who want a piece of the pie, but do we face an ethical dilemma? Sure, throwing as much shit at a wall as humanly possible and seeing what sticks can work, but at what cost? Just go to Amazon and browse the thousands and thousands of products available. It's weird and excessive. Are you really looking out for the consumer, i.e. developing better products, or are you just looking to pad your bottom line? It's hard to say. I look at a company like Hyphaman. Surely they've made some strange decisions over the years, and have suffered some consequences for their negligence. Audio advice here in my hometown stopped carrying their products back in 2019. I really do believe that was a turning point, as everything has improved tremendously in the time since. But generally speaking, they, the audio manufacturer, nearly always frames the pitch within the scope of promising, quote, musical bliss, or whatever the catchphrase is this week. The audio reviewer, <coughs> excuse me, has taken a hold of this and ran with it as well. But does the music really matter? I discussed this concept in a video where I talked about Music Matters, the annual show at Audio Advice, and again, it goes back to the notion of a profit motive. We all love music or we wouldn't be here discussing products and babbling endlessly about our stinky opinions on everything. Music has a way of bringing people together, but I think that's become lost in this day and age, one in which nearly everything is being commodified for the sake of getting ahead, or if I could use the old adage, keeping up with the Joneses when referring to audio companies. For example, company A releases product and company B matches it with a similar product with maybe an enhancement or two. And don't even get me started on revisions. It's like when Bethesda releases an unfinished pile of poo and then charges for patches. Why don't you just make the game right the first time, you asswipe? <laughs> It's capitalism, sure. It's competition, fine. You'll never hear an argument from me as long as there's some sort of value being exchanged. 
but has it gotten out of hand? Is music simply a commodity and nothing more? Or is it a tool used to sell something to someone that they may not even need? Again, browse the internet at the endless amounts of products available, most of which do the exact same thing. Cough, cough, cough. <coughs> Excuse me. Or read the marketing of a new product on a company's website. You'd think you were about to get laid or something. Hey, everybody, we're all gonna get laid. <laughs> I can't count how many obscure companies have reached out wanting me to talk about their new product which looks like the same thing as all the others. I mean, if you want me to just tell people not to buy it, sure, go ahead and send it on over. It really makes me wonder if they actually read my articles before emailing me saying as much. We love your content. As far as music being a commodity, you could make the argument that it's always been like that, but I remember a time when it meant more and felt like it meant more than it does now when it was mostly about the feeling you got from it. Great songwriting, meaningful lyrics that touched your soul. I never remember combing through all this drivel that we have now, even in big box stores. Perhaps it's all fun and games until you grow up and realize that everything you've ever been told is a complete lie. So to answer the question, I have no doubt that companies have an interest in making quality products. If that weren't the case, they'd be out of business quickly. Or would they? Nowadays, you can release a trash product and as long as enough reviewers peddle it endlessly, it will probably be successful in some regard. But I also think there are misplaced motives for some companies who only seem to be in it for the money. As in, they make new products because they just know that people will buy them. What do you think? Leave a comment down below as I'd love to hear from you.